Who's on our show right now? Pamela Jean Noble herself. So let's welcome her to the show. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. This is fabulous stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about what motivates you to work out. But before we get to that, I want to learn a little bit about Pamela. So where are you from? Interesting. Do you have any siblings at all? I do. I have an older sister. Um, she lives in Texas, unfortunately. Um, oh. But we're, we're really close. Does she work out as well? Uh, she does. She doesn't get to eat like I do, but she definitely goes to the gym every day. Well, let's get straight to it. What got you interested in working out? Oh, wow. And um, I started basketball when I was five. So I did both up until about high school. And then with acting, um, getting more and more involved with, I had to kind of slack off on the sports during high school because I was already missing so much during filming and different things during high school. Um, but I was still, you know, working out, being physical, um, Three years? Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of the questions I always ask competitors. I always have to know. Um, your diet before competition is not really the same diet you normally are on. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. It's way different. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot um, harder, isn't it? That's it. You know what? You bring, you bring up an interesting question. I, ha I mean, uh, caused me to think about an interesting question I have to ask you. Uh, do you feel different when you have the six pack compared to when you don't have the six pack? Like for my body 
me how you really feel. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I can see. I can definitely tell that that'd be a great feeling. I remember the days of a six pack. I think I had about a three pack. I couldn't get down to the six, and now it's revolving around a one. But it's all about genetics. You're after all about genetics. There's some people yeah. who are predisposition to have like an eight pack. There's some people who can work out every single day and never even get a six pack just because their genetics aren't there to have it. Right? Well, that's fascinating. So that's, that could be yeah. encouraging to some who seem to be a, an elusive goal for them to try to get this six pack, but they have a hard time getting there. Oh, yeah. I think, I think literally, like I tell everybody, like social media is such a lie. Like, don't look at all the fitness models and like get discouraged and different things. I know girls, like one of my really good friends is an IFBB pro, and I can have like a six pack, like six weeks out prior to a competition, and her like the last thing to come in like two weeks before she doesn't even have a six pack like she looks so great everywhere else huh. so everybody is different and you can't get down on yourself for what somebody else has that's a great point you know it's very fascinating too because i've seen different body types and you can tell me you're the expert here but you can see the different body types some women might have really ripped arms others have really ripped abs some have really ripped legs so that's pretty much due to genetics Twenty to twenty-five pounds. Yeah, like that's wow. it. And uh, which is not a lot for you know girls that do competitions. Um, and I, you know, almost a month out from every single competition, my coach will be like, "Stop lifting your upper body because it's getting too ripped and it's just not going to look even." And that's just me. But there's some people where their legs, you know, all year round, whether they're on rip or not. Fantastic, and then they'll hold in other areas. So, uh, yeah. it's always different with everybody. We're going to get into a couple of those questions right now. We got a few minutes before our break, and then we're going to take some calls right after our break at about 1:45. But uh, so let's get into some of these questions. I know a lot of people uh, want to know. We had a couple already that were sent in. We'll get those, like I said, after the break. But a couple of questions that I have. Um, one of them was once again, did you find it difficult to date? being a fitness model because it seems some guys who don't have a six-pack may you may look at you and go well, she doesn't want anything to do with me did you find you intimidating <laughs> then um i feel like there's some truth in it however what i've realized is it's all about finding the support system more than anything like i oh. could care less if my boyfriend is ripped or not as long as he supports what i do you you care you don't care if he is ripped or not is that what you said? No, because it's one of those things like I like and this is my personal thoughts. Every competitor is different, but I would never want to date another competitor because like you're already like towards the end of your competition, you're already on thin ice, you're low energy, you are super moody. <laughs> so nice to date another competitor and keep on feeling that would be horrible. Like I wouldn't want two people in the same house that do that. Um, well, now you just made about 90% of the males very happy here. <laughs> well, and then that's the thing. Like, my previous ex, he didn't, um, you know, do any of that stuff. But he was the most unsupportive person I oh. have ever had in my life, you know. And now my, uh, my current boyfriend, uh, <laughs> he's so supportive. And, like, anything I do, whether it's modeling, bikini, competition, whatever, he's, like, all for it. And I feel like that's... The biggest thing is not giving your significant other, no matter what they do, a hard time because that's what creates the stress in the relationship and resentment, and that's just, you know, nope, nobody needs that in their life. <laughs> no, yeah, it doesn't, uh, yeah, I don't usually search for those things either. Let me ask you this question, one more on the relationship question. Um, what would you what do you find being one of the most important qualities? I know a lot of times we've heard studies say that humor is very important for women. What's one of the important qualities for you that you look for in a man? Um, I think support and honesty because 
I feel like if, you know, like, I have all of my boyfriend's passwords to, like, his phone and computer. He has all of mine. I never use them. But it's the fact that he has nothing to hide and he's willing to give up the same thing that I'm willing to give him mine. Because there's some people out there who've been dating for two or three years, you know, and their boyfriend or girlfriend won't even let them, like, pick up their phone without freaking out. And I feel like... That's just a life I would never want to live. <laughs> I would never want to be involved with somebody like that. Um, but I just think it's great when you can be super open and honest with each other and there's no judgment or, um, you know, it, it creates a lot more confidence in a relationship, too, that you don't have to stress out or worry what the other person could be doing. Yeah, that's really, that's the tough one. That's exactly, I think everybody wants the same thing, whether you're a fitness model or not. Um, that would be scary. Let me ask you this question. We're going to go over to some diet questions and fitness questions, if you don't mind. Um, some people think you always have to eat healthy, but you kind of alluded to the fact that you do take breaks. So can people still look good or at least try to lose weight and still, how would you say, cheat or eat things they want to do, eat that may not be the best for them? online or um, I know Quest has like a whole cookbook now, different things like that. But there's so many recipes where you can pretty much find something that mm. you like normally that may be a cheat to you and find a way to make it clean. Um, and I fully tell people to like embrace that and try out recipes because I know I have a sweet tooth and I have a salty tooth <laughs> and all that in between. And, you know, if you can just curve it without having so much better because you're not having, you know, so it's kind of like candy. If you haven't had candy in so long, but you love candy, and you have it once, the next day you're going to want it again. So, yeah. um, it gets addicting, doesn't it? I feel it? like that would be the easiest way is, you know, go, everybody has internet now, whether it's on your phone or at home, and go do some research and find some stuff that you really like and, and try it out because it'll literally change your life on the things that you can make that aren't going to make you feel guilty because that's half the battle I tell people is like when people stress out after eating bad which is 70% of people you know if not more uh, then you're releasing cortisol so you're stressing out and you already just put fat in your body and then your body's just going to hold on to it rather than feeling good about your cheat so and that cortisol is that stress hormone correct yeah, that's so it could be a double whammy. You start stressing out because you ate poorly, and now you have those additional calories, and now you're stressing out and releasing more cortisol. Exactly. That's what I tell people. I'm like, if you're going to cheat and you're going to do it, then you need to commit to it and feel good about it. Like, if I have a donut and my donut's not good, I'm not going to sit there for three hours afterwards and beat myself up and be the best donut I ever had. Right. <laughs> We're going to take a quick one minute break. We're going to look at a commercial of you, and then we'll come back to get some of those questions. We'll be right back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone, with Pamela Jean Noble. You can see the picture right beside me here in a second. We'll take a look. That's the girl you saw in that commercial. We're going to ask her some serious fitness questions now. We got to learn a little bit more about her. What a wonderful person she really is. So let's find out our first question. We're going to take a call from Nina from Westminster. So let's see if we can get that call going. Well, we're going to get back to Nina in a second. We'll take one of our tweets first. Uh, one of the tweets, actually, we answered the question already. Asked me, the question was, what kind of man do you like? That was from Gino. So, Gino, you got your question <laughs> answered in the first segment. <laughs> Another one is from Naeem. He says, what is the secret of your fitness? Not sure what that really means, but we uh, want to take a crack at that quickly here. <laughs> Let me ask you, we got another question from Jesse. Um, this might be a tough one for you to answer. How, how is it that you became the most amazing person ever? So, I don't know. Can you answer that I one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, mean, I guess I could thank my parents for that. <laughs> I had, uh, my mom was very supportive of me growing up. Um, I think she was a 
fun, but, like, I had one of those moms, like, you don't mess with mom. Like, she never even had to yell at me. I just kind of knew. Oh. <laughs> and my dad was super goofy, but he was a businessman and created his own business. And, um, but he's literally the most, like, he's like a kid. He's, he's a fun guy to be around. Um, so I feel like I really had, like, the best of both worlds because I, like, knew growing up, like, my parents would know me if I ever messed up. And I literally... My mom, I'm not trying to say this just to make myself sound good. Like, my mom will tell you, like, <laughs> my daughters were awesome growing up. Like, I never had to, like, punish them. Like, they knew what they had to do. They knew they had to get good grades. They knew how to be responsible, and they did it. So, wow. um, yeah. Well, let's do this. I think we got <laughs> Nina. I think we got Nina on the line. Let's find out. Nina, are you there? Hi. I'm here. Oh, there she is. Hi, Nina. This is Pamela Jean Noble. What question do you have for her? Hi, Pamela. Before I ask you a question, I just want to let you know that you're really pretty. Um, I love your body, and I just have a question um, regarding, you know, uh, working out and fitness. Um, I am a 5 feet 1 girl, uh, pretty petite. Um, I wear like five zero, like double zero sometimes. Um, just wondering, uh, I, weigh, I weigh 95 pounds. I'm just wondering, like, how I would have to uh, work out to be able to get more toned. Without moving. Where you get more muscle? Yeah, she wants to get more toned. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, thank you, by the way. That's so sweet of you. <laughs> um, but I would say to don't be afraid of the weight because that's going to definitely be your best friend to get toned. Um, a lot of girls are afraid that if they lift weights or look heavy that they're going to look super bulky. But especially for you being a shorter, petite girl, it's going to be your best friend because you can gain muscle faster than anybody else. The taller girl will take so much more time. Uh, so I would say don't get in the gym. If you don't know um, some of the exercises, um, you know, follow your favorite fitness models or bodybuilding.com. It has amazing tutorials on, like, any body part you could ever imagine. And start lifting those weights because you'll see results super fast, especially if you don't lift already and the more body fat you're going to burn so you should see results pretty fast especially since you're already seeing like you have really low body fat <laughs> yeah she's starting at a good point isn't she would i have to eat more um because i eat a lot but i don't gain weight that much so would i have to eat more in order to kind of like i guess gain more muscle Oh, wow. So five meals at 90, what is it, 95 pounds is 95 ounces of protein. 95 grams. <laughs> Sounds good, Pamela. Yeah, thank you so much for answering my question. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nina. She just said thank you for answering her question. Thank you, Nina, very much from Westminster. Absolutely. Pamela, we got one more question. Um, one of the things that actually I think is everybody's mind all the time is, is low-carb diets. Are they really good? Heart and it can 
mm-hmm. be the complete opposite for them. So I always like to have people do their research to make sure it's going to get them the best results. That's fantastic advice. Pamela Jean Noble, everyone. I can't thank you enough, Pamela, for being on here. Thank you so much. Thank you for 